trying to have only half an hour, and I'm going to go as fast as possible. But if you think I'm going too fast, I'll need to slow down. If you tell me stop because we have many questions, please feel free. All right? So um, what is the Parkinson disease? Parkinson disease is one of the neurological disease, right? But you say so is depression. But if somebody has depression, well, part may be part of well, There's so many things. At one point of our life, we have depression. So, you know, it's, a, it's, it's not something It's uncommon, you know. But when you say we have a Parkinson, somebody is the most feared disease. Why? Because, because what happened, yeah, your, your brain is trapped in a body that does not respond to your command. And we know the causes for that, basically. It's the destruction of the neurons in our brain that produce the neurotransmitter dopamine. And that leads to disturbance of the motor function. And that's characterized as, as you see here, this arthia, this kinesia, and tremor, shuffling gait. In this country, it affects about 2% of uh, people over the age of 65. But it doesn't mean that it affects people who are younger. Okay? It could affect people at any age, 30s, 40s. Does not discriminate. Okay? Now, this disease was well recognized. The symptoms of the disease were well recognized back in history 500 BC in, civil, in uh, uh, civilized, uh, uh, Asian civilization of China and India. And what did they use at that time? And mind you, they're still using it nowadays. They don't have the access of what we have here and the medication, L-DOPA. So what they, they use is uh, uh, beans or, or some kind of legumes from a tree. It's a big tree. It has legumes or seeds called macuna purura. And what they use is they took this uh, 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 legumes, they boil it a few times, and they drink it like a tea. Okay. But it was not that the disease formally uh, uh, really described until 1817 by Dr. James Parkinson. And this is Dr. James Parkinson. And the way he described the disease is not very much different from nowadays, except, see, see here? He says the senses and the intellect being uninjured. But what we see nowadays in the disease, the cognitive ability does get affected in the senses. Why do you think that's the reason? Why? We live longer. We live longer. So we are seeing the progression of the disease because we live as simple as that. Okay? Now, as a nutritionist, as a clinical nutritionist, I have goals. When I have a Parkinson patients, we have nutritional goals. Those goals are which revive in maintaining the nutritional status of the patients. Maintain the nutritional status of the patient. If this self malnourished, we try to work on them to try to make it as healthy as possible and to maintain it. Ensure and also to provide relief, symptom relief from the disease and relief from the side effects of the medication. And most important is to ensure the optimal absorption of the medication, which is L-DOPA. Those goals are based on issues that comes along as the disease progress. And those issues as here as we see, such as food, medication interaction, weight loss, uh, GI problems, or gastrointestinal dysfunction, such as GERD and gastroparesis, constipation, medication side effects, and osteoporosis. There are others, but there, those are the main five ones. When it comes to food medication interaction, what you see here, the L-DOPA is the mainstay of treatment in Parkinson's disease, right? And in order to achieve the optimal response, L-DOPA, the medication, need to, to, uh, to be delivered in steady and stable way to the brain because the fluctuation of delivery affects the efficacy of the drug, okay? And then the pattern of response to the treatment. Yes? Could you move the Oh, I'm sorry. Um, you can't stand the point of the computer system. I just, because we don't have the thing, let me see. Um, the only thing, because I have to... Um, I don't know how we're going to do this. Um, Just try the computer this way. Maybe I can.
put it that way and do you see better? Yes. All right. Okay. So um, what the, the food medication interaction. So L dopa the, uh, the what what is um, as we said it need to be reached to the uh, to the brain. Okay. The fluctuation of delivery affects the efficacy of the treatment. Diet contribute to this problem. Diet affects the pharmacokinetics of the L-dopa. What do I mean by pharmacokinetics? Is the way the drug absorb and transports eventually to the brain, okay? So the diet and specifically the protein, all right, interfere with this process at number of levels. Let's look at these levels. Number one is the timing of L-dopa doses in relation to meal time. Now there was a study where they took patients with the most erratic response to the normal intake of L-DOPA, okay? And they took those the patient and they gave them a single dose, administered a single dose of L-DOPA in a fasting state. The results were remarkable. They found out an efficient absorption of L-DOPA, okay, which corresponded with a predictable and relatively prolonged motor function. So those patients, the same ones who were taking up dopa did not do well and have that erratic, they did very well when they gave the medication on fasting state. When they gave the medication what? And on the fasting state. Oh. And that's why we say the timing of all dopa is important. That's why we tell patients to take their medication about 30 minutes prior to their meal or two hours post meal. Okay? Yes. I have a question and I hope this isn't something stupid, but uh, my husband takes his medication with a uh, meal in the morning. That means he should take it with water and then wait a couple of hours to That's what I'm coming to. This is common thing is because this is extremely important. Thank you for sharing that with us. Because what happened, that's number number three we're getting to. Thank you. So um, what happened now, the second thing is, where does the medication get absorbed from? The L-dopa, where does it get absorbed from? Once we get from the mouth, where does it go? Esophagus, and then from the esophagus, let me show you this picture. From the mouth to the esophagus, this is the stomach. The medication does not, does not absorb through the gastric mucosa. Where does it get absorbed? It get absorbed from the small intestine, from the duodenum, specifically the jejunum. So this is the site of the absorption for the medication uh, of dopa that you're taking. But this is the site. It depends on the gastric emptying to get to the site, okay? The gastric emptying. What is, what does it call uh, to, uh, the time that it takes for the stomach to empty the content from the stomach into the small intestine? What does it call? Gastric, gastric emptying rate, all right? Is that how long <coughs> it takes for the stomach to get the content from the stomach and small intestines? What does it depend on? There are factors affecting that. Those factors are such as size of the meal, okay? The content of the meal and the viscosity of the meal. So the bigger, the bigger is the meal, it delays the gastric emptying. The heavier it is, and especially they found that the nutrient fat retards the gastric emptying the most in compared to the carbohydrate or the protein. It takes longer time, all right? And the viscosity, the higher some fiber, the higher they are, the viscous one, the also it's delayed the gastric emptying, okay? So, so why this is important? Well, let's say, when we eat food, when we eat a meal, how long does it take to finish, eat and finish and digest and digest? Two Average, two hours, exactly. But if I'm eating, let's say today, and by the end of the day, I'm so hungry, you guys have, they fed you well today? Yes? Well, by the end, we get home, I don't know, probably you're traveling, and you get home in the way before you get I'm starving. Let me get into that, this restaurant. Well, steak sounds good, okay, so I'm gonna have a steak, I'm gonna, oh, Forget vegetables for today. Maybe I'm gonna have French fries. I haven't had. It. I had a French fries. Finish it with the nice pie, uh, kind of apple pie with the ice cream. All right. How long do you think this 
uh, we're going to get digested. For me, I probably going to take me four hours at least, all right? All right. Now, with, this is what the problem. Imagine that you're supposed to take the L-Dopa, the doctor tells you to take the L-Dopa two hours usual post meal, okay? With this meal, you're still digesting, you're taking the medication, even though it was three, four hours, you're taking the medication, guess what? Some of them still getting di you know, digested in the stomach, some of them still getting absorbed from here. And that's where we run to the problem, miss, that's where we get to the problem, is the competition between the nutrients, between the L-dopa, and also the amino acids. What is L-dopa? L-dopa is large nutrient amino acids, okay? When it gets to the small intestine, does it get 